Hi, everyone. Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We are really excited you are here. My name is Catherine, and I will be your facilitator for this session. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. This is if you have any questions at all, feel free to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are here, ready and available to answer your questions. This is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to check the website on the schedule for more. And lastly, this session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. We are currently in session D1, while, where my mouse is circling at the moment. And this is also the same order of presentation. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and we are going to kick it off to our very first representative from Eckerd College. All right, hello, thank you, Catherine. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. Well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dylan Cassidy. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Eckerd College. Now, Eckerd College, we are located in sunny St. Petersburg, Florida. So for those of you coming from uh, New Jersey, I'm sure this is a very different geography than you're used to, um, but I've got only a couple minutes. So I'm going to jump right in. So Eckerd College, um, a small liberal arts and science college um, with about 2000 students total. And as you see from this lovely graphic here, most of our students travel from out of state. So uh, of our small campus body, we represent almost all 50 states, um, only 48, um, and 39 countries in our campus body. And most of our students do live on campus for all four years, and first year students are required to live on campus. Um, on average, our students are traveling more than a thousand miles away from home to attend Eckerd College. So if you are considering us from uh, far away, you will not be the only one. Everyone is kind of in the same boat uh, in that most of them are traveling from pretty far away to come here. Now, um, something unique about our academic calendar is we are on a 414 academic calendar. What that means is you take four classes in the fall and then you take one class during winter term and then four classes in the spring. Now, during winter term, it's a three-week class during the month of January, which I especially like talking about here in New Jersey because you may not want to be in New Jersey during the month of January. Uh, most students will come on campus and take a short-term class, or many students will take part in a study abroad program uh, during this time. We are ranked number two in the country among baccalaureate institutions for short-term study abroad programs because we offer this January term. Now, during your first year, however, our uh, academic calendar is on what we call 144. So that short term class moves during the month of August and you take part in what we call autumn term. Now, we may should we should call it hot term because it is hot in Florida in August, um, but luckily all of our buildings are air conditioned. Um, and during autumn term, it's a three week intense orientation where you take part in academic coursework, campus activities, you meet your faculty mentor and even do some service during this time. Um, the main purpose of autumn term is since most of our students travel from far away and don't know a single person when they get here, it gives you three weeks to sort of acclimate to college life. It makes it a little bit less intimidating to move um, a thousand plus miles away from home. Um, and you will pick your classes during this time. You'll get to know your faculty mentor. And we have an event almost every single night during this time. Uh, so it, it is definitely a busy week, but you do take a class during that. Now, here is a list of all of our academic majors. We've got over 50 different majors and minors to choose from. I will let this stay on the screen for a couple of seconds so that you can find your major of interest. Uh, but anything that has an asterisk next to it, it, that means that it is a minor. Um, it's worth noting that all students technically start out undecided, um, but you do not declare a major until the end of your first year. So if you're not quite sure what you wanna do, Eckerd could be a place for you. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't show a nice picture of our campus. Um, so I think this sort of encompasses the Eckerd spirit in that, uh, yes, this is on our campus. Um, so to the right, you'll see our marine science building where you can do some pretty cool um, hands-on research. 
Um, to the left, you'll see uh, that's the coast, that's the Boga Siega Bay, which is not far from uh, Tampa Bay. Um, and then there is a dog here. We are a pet friendly college. We are the country's most pet friendly college, which is a proud distinction. Uh, we have some pet friendly residence halls and then some not pet friendly residence halls. Um, and then we also have one of the country's most comprehensive waterfront programs. Uh, so students can rent out canoes, kayaks, paddle boards, sailboats uh, for fun. If you're stressed on a Sunday, you can take it out. Um, but we also do use these for academic opportunities as well. We have tugboats, we have power boats that you can rent out or that you can take out with uh, even an environmental class. And you can go out into the water, take samples. And this is during class time that you get to do this. So it, it gives a new meaning to the hands-on approach to studying. Now, if you are interested, um, the best way to apply is probably through Common App. Um, our application is officially open. And if you submit your application to us by November 15th, it will be considered an early action application. Um, it's worth noting early action applications are free of charge. So why not apply early? Um, the main thing we look at is your official high school transcript. Um, we are test optional this year and next year. Um, and we, if you apply after November 15th, it would be on rolling admission. Uh, my last slide, and if anything might be my most important one, is we are in a book called The Colleges That Change Lives, which highlights 40 small liberal arts colleges that just do it different. And the quote starts off by saying, Eckerd might seem like the perfect spot for an easy college career, four years marked by sun, surf, and sand. But if you're looking for a vacation, you should enroll elsewhere. I feel like I've spent my five minutes talking a lot about the beach, but we are uh, much more than just a college on the beach. If you are considering attending a comprehensive liberal arts program that will encourage you to challenge your beliefs, think outside the box, and get some hands-on work, um, this could be the place for you. And it is a nice perk that we have a beach, but we are much more than just a college on the beach. Um, I'll share my contact info in the chat if I'm able to. Um, and thank you for attending. I'll end it here. Awesome, thank you. The next representative is from Bloomfield College. All right, good afternoon. Well, good evening now, everyone. Give me one second while I'm pulling up my screen from the beginning. All right, so good evening, everyone. My name is Abby. I am the um, Bloomfield College Admission Counselor. And fun fact is I'm also a Bloomfield College alum class of 2018. So just some fun fact, um, background information about Bloomfield College is that we're located in Essex County, New Jersey, and we're also New Jersey's only predominantly Black institution, Hispanic serving institution, and minority serving institution four-year college. We're the highest rank for social mobility in the state of New Jersey. We're number one in the state at moving students forward economically, and we're also the 14th most diverse national liberal arts college um, as well. So we have a lot of different diverse backgrounds, diverse cultures. Students come from all different backgrounds, all different cultures at Bloomfield College. We're also a relatively small school as well. Our student to teacher ratio is 15 to one. So our class sizes ranges from 15 students to 25 the most. So professors do know your names. They do know your faces. So this is just some um, background information, some general statistic information about Bloomfield College. So here is um, a list of all the programs and majors that we do offer on campus. I'll leave this, you know, for a few, just so, you know, you could take it in. Um, most of our programs are four-year um, program, four-year degrees, but we do have an accelerated nursing program. And we also have um, two five-year program tracks, and that's for students interested in accounting and teaching. Students can choose to do a five-year track rather than four, but in that five years, they'll get both their master's, both their bachelor's and their master's degree. And we, and we have a few certificate programs as well. All right, so just some background information about student life. We are a um, Division II school, so we do um, accept athletic scholarships. Students are able to come and play on the college level and get um, scholarship money for that. We're part of the CACC conference, and these are the different lists of um, 
the, the um, sports that we do play on campus. And we also do have eSports as well. This is our third year with our eSports program. And then we have over 30 active clubs and organizations on campus. They range from student government to the serve club for students interested in you know, community service, VIP commuter club. Bloomfield is a bigger commuter school than it is um, residence life school. So we have a lot of commuter students. So we have a VIP commuter club. So resident um, commuter students isn't just like, you know, you go to class and go straight home. You can mingle with other commuter students, mingle with resident students. We have an active Greek life as well. So there's a lot of different um, clubs and organizations that cater to a lot of different needs, a lot of different backgrounds so that students can find what, you know, their best fit. So some resources that we have available on campus, advising and coaching, career development, internships start as early as your sophomore year. We offer free tutoring for all our students on campus. We have services for students with, um, students with disabilities, for students who need special um, accommodations in the classrooms or if special accommodations in the residence halls. We have the honors program. We have the TRIO STAR program. Bloomfield is a big first generation school, meaning that a lot of our students are the first or one of the first in their um, families to go to college. So we have a support group for them. We have EOF program as well. And residence life is open for students all four years. So any semester students want to take it on and off, that is an option for them. It is open all four years and as well as free parking for our students on campus. All right, so the admission process, the admission process, we accept the application typically through our Bloomfield College website or the Common App. High school transcript, we have required at least a 2.5 GPA. We um, require two letters of recommendation. We're uh, a personal essay. We're SAT and ACT optional. So students who are not strong test takers, this is a positive for them. And if students do submit their um, test scores, it doesn't make or break their acceptance. It just helps them financially because every student that gets accepted gets a merit-based scholarship based off their GPA. The 2.5 is the, um, the requirement. And so it's like the higher your GPA, the more money that you get. But the, um, if you do submit your SAT and ACT, it just helps you potentially to increase that amount and special admission programs. If students fall a little bit below our GPA requirement, we have alternative summer programs that they could qualify for to still get accepted. And lastly, financial aid. I know that is a top question. That's a, you know, how do we pay for college? Bloomfield is the most affordable private school in the state of New Jersey. 97% of our students receive um, financial aid, FAFSA, a grant or a scholarship. So FAFSA opens up October 1st. It opened up October 1st for all the seniors and that's the Bloomfield College code right here. Tuition annually is about 30,000, but in the end, the average after, you know, FAFSA financial aid rolls in, the average is about 3,500 for the average typical student at Bloomfield College. And lastly, this is my contact information. So I'm going to just leave this here and I, I can also write it in the chat as well. I'll also write my email and my um, texting app number. And thank you. Very helpful information, thank you. Just a friendly reminder that if anyone has any questions at all, to feel free to submit those questions using the Q&A button towards the bottom of your screen. Any questions at all, our representatives are here to assist. The next representative is from Rutgers University, New Brunswick. Thank you so much, Catherine. Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Blackburn, and I am one of the assistant directors of admission at Rutgers University, New Brunswick. I'm so glad to be here and to tell you a little bit more about the university in your backyard. Uh, I'm guessing many of you from New Jersey have grown up in or around Rutgers for a lot of your life, um, whether that's a billboard on the highway or a soccer camp that you might have attended or a family member who's been telling you Rutgers stories for years and years. I'm here to tell you a little bit more about Rutgers and what I think makes us so special. So these are just some of our many accolades. Um, I think one of the most important things to highlight is about 32% of our students are incoming as first-gen students. And we'll talk a little bit more about the different resources and supports that we have. Um, Rutgers is also a super diverse institution. We are the most diverse school in the Big Ten Conference. We're really proud of that. I think it represents New Jersey well, being that we're one of the most diverse states in the country in and of itself. 
One of the other things that I think Rutgers does really well and is very meaningful when it comes to trying to get a job uh, are our 175 research centers and institutes on campus. Many of our majors and programs are going to require you to do some form of an internship or a research component in order to graduate. I remember when I was first applying to jobs, I was completely overwhelmed by the number of entry level positions that were looking for me to have one to three years of experience. I'm like, how am I supposed to get that? And this is exactly exactly how. In addition to offering those opportunities on campus, we have a ton of different supports and resources for students to assist them with finding those opportunities, whether that's internships at your dream company or a research opportunity on campus working with your favorite faculty member um, or in an area of research that you're thinking you might want to pursue. In terms of student life, we have more than 750 clubs and organizations on campus. So there is definitely something for everyone. Um, those or organizations are gonna range from things that are academic, like our Business Student Association or our Pre-Medical Association, to things that are anything but academic, like the Beyonce Listening Club or the Seeing Eye Puppy Club. Um, we also have a bunch of different living learning communities, which I think are a great alternative to living in a regular freshman dorm, including the Paul Robeson living learning community that's meant for students to just kind of try to support you in your transition from high school to college. Um, and that's just one of many different living learning communities that we have. This is a great way to kind of guarantee that everybody who's living on your floor or in your dormitory building are folks that are interested in similar things as you. It's a great and easy way to make friends. We also have more than 80 fraternities and sororities on campus. Only about 40% of our students participate in Greek life. So it's one of those things that it's definitely there if that's something that's interests you, but it's not gonna make or break your Rutgers experience if you choose not to participate. We also have a ton of opportunities for students to participate in service, including our dance marathon, which is the picture at the bottom right of the slide here. They raise more than a million dollars every year for pediatric cancer research. And by doing it, they're just dancing. Um, this is a student run organization though. So that's a great way to get some opportunity experience, managing a budget of over a million dollars, something not many students uh, at the uh, when they're applying for jobs can say. One of the other things that's unique about Rutgers is our campus map. Um, so I kind of liken it to Disney World. Um, each of the campuses within Rutgers New Brunswick are very different from one another. They all have their own campus feel. They also, uh, you have access to each of them as a student on campus. So it doesn't matter where you're living. If your dorm is on the Cook and Douglas campus, but you like what they're serving on the Livingston campus for lunch, you can go there in the dining hall. It works with your meal plan, all of that good stuff. We do have a free bus system that takes students around from campus to campus. Um, one of the fun things about our bus system and our registration system for classes is you actually are not allowed to sign up for a class that you can't get to on time. Uh, so if you're trying to sign up for a class on the most Southern campus, but you're on Bush campus, you will actually receive a little notification saying, actually, I think you should sign up for this class instead, same class, different time or different campus. Um, so there's a lot of support to make sure that you can still get to class on time with those buses. But it's really unique, especially for students that might not be interesting or might not have any idea whether you want to live in an urban environment or a suburban environment when it comes to going to college. You can have all of those things at Rutgers New Brunswick. When we're reviewing students for admission, we are not reviewing you for a major. We're reviewing you for the school within the university that you're applying to. So on the application, you're able to select up to three different schools. I always encourage students to do so. It just increases your chances to be admitted and also to be considered for scholarships. School of Arts and Sciences is our largest. It has the most majors. It's also where our most popular major is located, which is undecided. Um, many of our students are coming in not exactly sure what it is they want to study. We offer a direct PharmD program. So students who are applying to the Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy are getting their doctorate in pharmacy in six years. School of Engineering offers 14 different concentrations, as well as a course that's meant to expose you to all 14 concentrations in your first year. So that way you'll be really sure about what it is that you wanna study within the engineering field. Business School works in a similar way, six different concentrations, and you'll be asked to take some coursework in all of those in order to declare what your major will be. Um, the four schools that you see at the bottom here are upper division schools. So if you're looking to apply to those, you want to apply through the School of Arts and Sciences first, um, and then you'll make your transition from there. 
Application process is pretty easy. We're on our own application and the coalition as well. And we ask that you self-report your grades. If you have questions about that, definitely ask your counselors. They're there to help um, and you're welcome to reach out to us as well. Thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. The next representative is from Ohio Wesleyan University. Hello everyone, um, my name is Tanique Dennis and I am excited to be here. Hello, uh, New Jersey. I am a little bit of tidbit about me. I am actually originally born and raised in New York City. So I am an East Coast uh, girl at heart, uh, but I reside here in Ohio. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Make sure, I do apologize. Let me share my screen here. Okay, apologies. All right, so again, as I mentioned, my name is Tanique Dennis. I am one of the Associate Directors of Admissions here at Ohio Wesleyan University, as we affectionately call it, OWU. Uh, what makes Ohio Wesleyan University, OWU, um, special is the OWU connection. Um, and those are broken into three parts. Think big, go global, and get real. Um, the think big is research. Um, our students are emerged um, and encouraged um, to discover new findings, as well as challenge past theories. Uh, we have a science uh, research summer program where our students uh, stay on campus during the summer. Uh, and this past year, um, one of our students was actually able to discover a new worm species, um, which was very exciting. We have uh, professors uh, that work and have contracts with NASA and our students help assist with research. Now, research is not just um, in regards to science, uh, but our students also uh, who study various um, degrees such as human uh, kinetics um, uh, and English and literature will also do research. Uh, go global, um, over 70% of our students um, actually travel uh, in our program. And that's broken into three different types of travel. The traditional uh, type of travel, um, where you may go and study abroad. We have over 400 partnerships uh, with universities um, all over the world. Um, so students will spend a semester and, and immerse themselves within that culture. Uh, the second part is uh, what we call theory to practice grants. Um, and so we have the OWU Connection Center where uh, we will assist students in writing grants, uh, present those to um, the OWU Connection uh, committee and be approved uh, to have the ability to travel all over the world. So for example, if you wanted to study the difference between uh, the pyramids in Egypt versus uh, Sudan, the pyramids in Sudan, you could write a grant, travel with fellow uh, classmates and your professor or alone um, and would be, uh, uh, if you're approved, would have the ability to make, um, to travel to those places. Uh, and then thirdly, we also have what we call travel learning courses, uh, where travel is actually built in uh, to the actual course. So you could be taking a course um, in, let's say, biology, um, where you may be studying Charles Darwin. Um, and at the end of that course, you would travel to the Galapagos Islands. And that's actually uh, one of our most popular travel courses, uh, where students will travel there with the professor, with other classmates, um, and be able to actually experience the Galapagos Islands. And we have actually um, hosted this trip uh, for over 50 years. Um, we also have another uh, very popular travel course uh, that has to do with um, eating, uh, where our students get the opportunity to actually travel uh, to Italy. So we wanna make sure that our students are well-rounded, have the opportunity to be able to travel all over the world, gather experience and learn and apply exactly what you're learning in the classroom setting. So you're not just sitting in a classroom, taking notes um, and taking exams, you're actually getting out there and getting robust experience. And then last but not least, the, the most important is get real. 
Uh, we have a career connection center where we work with students um, who have the opportunity to um, do internships and externships. And actually when you do those internships, uh, you have the ability to actually use that experience um, towards your credit hours. So you actually don't have to actually uh, take a course, you'll get your experience in the real world setting and use those credits to go toward uh, your degree. So here's an example of a young lady um, by the name of Eva, um, who was able to participate in all areas of our OWU connection. Um, so she did travel, she did several internships, um, and um, locally, um, in different states, in different countries. She did do the Galapagos Islands. Um, she went to Panama to study, um, to study frogs and do research there, and now is currently uh, working in Alaska. So she was able to utilize all of those experiences um, to get her the job and career that she wants. And this story is one story. Every student has the ability to tailor um, their degree the way that they want to. We actually do not require students to uh, declare a major until um, their second, uh, until the, excuse me, their second year, uh, their last semester in their sophomore year. So you can explore and discover and figure out exactly what you want to do. Now, who is a OWU student? Um, our students, they volunteer. 91% um, of our students have had a connection experience. However, if you are not the type of person that likes to travel, that's okay. Um, it's not a requirement, but also we do not limit how often you can travel. 27% um, of our students are international or multicultural, um, and our student population is a little bit over 1,400. So we are a smaller uh, private liberal school with a big heart. Um, and 95% of our grads um, are either working in their field of study or in graduate school. So we're very proud um, of that statistics. Um, we have five popular majors, um, but we also have over 70 uh, majors uh, that are available. We're located in Delaware, Ohio, right outside of the bustling city of Columbus. Beautiful halls and our tuition. I'll also put a link in here with more additional information. 99% of our students do receive uh, financial aid, as well as merit-based scholarships. And I want to thank everyone for the opportunity. And again, I apologize for the snag earlier, um, but I look forward and hopefully working with you soon. Great, thank you. Just another friendly reminder that if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those questions using the Q&A button. Any questions about the college application process or for any of our representatives or schools here uh, today, you, um, we encourage you to include the school name. The next representative is from Texas A&M University. Thanks everyone. Uh, let me just go ahead and share my screen here real quick. Awesome. All right. Howdy, everyone. Uh, my name is Courtney McHenry, and I am the Northeast Regional Advisor for Texas A&M University, located in College Station, Texas. Um, so I'm actually based regionally up here in the Northeast. I live not too far from many of you in New Jersey I'm in the greater New York City area. So I work with all New Jersey students, um, but I always start every presentation with howdy because it is the official greeting of Aggieland. If you come visit campus, you will be greeted by howdy by, by all who pass you. So to get started, I'm gonna give a little background information. Um, Texas A&M University is located, as I mentioned, in College Station, Texas. You can see where, where we're located uh, on this map here on the screen where the white star is. We are in the big three triangle. So we are right in between Dallas, Houston, and Austin which is nice, we've got three cities in our backyard, but we are in our own large college town. Um, college Station is really a very big college town. Um, we're, we were founded as a public land grant university and we were the first institution of higher learning in the state of Texas. When we opened our doors in 1876, we opened as an all male military school. 
Now we've been the co-ed for a long, long time now, but we still do have deep military roots on campus. Um, we have a senior military college to this day, still on our campus. They're known as the Corps of Cadets. And in our senior military college is the largest in the nation outside of the traditional government one runs, right? So outside of the Naval Academy, West Point, Coast Guard Academy. So um, to continue giving you guys some stats about Texas A&M, right now we are the largest university in the nation. Um, we have about 71,000 students. So big school, right? Um, class sizes really vary. You know, I know students who go to class and they have 30 to 40 students in one of their classes. And I know students who are in maybe some of our more popular academic programs like engineering or business and they go to class and they're in lecture halls of four to 500 people. So class sizes really vary by which academic program you're in. Are you in a larger one or a smaller one? And how far into that major you are. Typically your classes get smaller the further into your major you get. This year, our first year student retention rate was 94%. So we're very proud of us. Um, that tells us that our students are happy at Texas A&M and are returning for their sophomore year. Um, and real quick, I always like to give a fun fact when I'm on the slide. So you can see our main academic building uh, with the green dome. Hopefully we have some Disney lovers in the audience. Um, Hopefully you've all seen a little, at least one Pixar movie. So at Texas A&M, we have a big animation and visualization program. And a lot of those students after they graduate go to work for Pixar. So in some Pixar movies, we have some Texas A&M connections, right? So in Monsters Inc, Sully uh, is named after Texas A&M's first university president, Sullivan. And then in the movie Monsters University, um, you can actually see this building with the green dome because the campus in Monsters University was based off of Texas A&M's campus. So just a fun fact there. All right, let me talk a little bit about academics here. Um, so being a very large uh, institution, we do have a lot of academic offerings. Um, we have over 130 different majors in 13 different schools and colleges. And we are an R1 tier one research institution. Some of our more popular majors include those in the College of Engineering, um, Mays Business School, Animation and Visualization, and Meteorology. Although we've got many more options besides those. Um, if you are a student that's silently panicking as I'm going over you know, academic information, because maybe you're not quite sure what you wanna study, that is okay. It's all right to not know exactly what you wanna you know, do for the rest of your life as a 17 or 18 year old. Um, but if that's you, I, I totally encourage you to pull out your phone, scan this QR code because Thought Company offers a quiz for high school students to take to think about majors based off of their personality type. Okay, let's talk a little bit about um, the admissions process. So for the seniors in the room um, who are thinking about applying, we are on the Coalition app or the Apply Texas app. We are not on the Common app. So you will pick the Coalition or Apply Texas, one and only one, it doesn't matter which application you choose. Beyond the application, we require SAA, um, which is a personal statement in response to tell us your story. So your, your college essay, your personal statement can be, you know, it's very open-ended. It can be written about almost anything. Uh, we require a fee. And then this is the big one. Um, we require the self-reported academic record. So as a student applying to Texas A&M, you don't have to you know, run to your guidance or school counseling office and request that transcripts be sent to us because we will take the self-reported academic record in place of your high school transcripts during the application process. Now, if you're admitted down the line, we will then request your official high school transcripts to verify what you put in the SRAR, but the SRAR is required. And then we are test optional this year. You can submit other pieces, you know, you can submit optional letters of rec if you would like, an optional resume or activities list. All of that can be uploaded right in your applicant portal, which you will get into after you apply through the coalition or apply Texas. 
This slide just has some dates to remember. Um, again, if you're thinking about applying to Texas A&M, it might be a good idea to take out your phone and take a snapshot of the slide. Um, all of our students have until December 1st to apply, but we do work on a rolling admission and a first come first serve basis. So if you are a student who wants to be admitted, let's say into engineering or business, one of our more popular programs, it would behoove you to apply earlier rather than later to give you give yourself the best shot possible of getting into your first choice major. But that's it from me. Um, this is my contact information here. And I will drop my landing page in the chat, which is my web was my web page on our website, which has my contact info and all my upcoming presentations. So thanks for having me y'all gig them and have a good rest of your day. All great information. Thank you. Our last representative, but certainly not least is from Widener University. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Faduk. I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions at Widener University. So for those of you who do not know where we are located, we are located about 10 minutes south of the Philadelphia International Airport, just outside of the city of Philadelphia. So a little bit more about what Widener has to offer. We do offer a personalized uh, classroom instruction. So our average class size is around 25 students per class with a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio. 90% of our faculty hold a doctor or terminal degree within their field. And a big benefit about Widener is we do not use uh, teaching assistants, TAs, graduate assistants, whatever you want to call them to teach our undergraduate coursework. So you're learning directly from the faculty, whether that would be from in-class instruction, office hours, extra help, the whole nine yards. So we have around 3,000 full-time undergraduate students, and additionally, we have around 2,000 graduate students, and we have 40 majors and 50 minors, uh, so ranging from anywhere between the STEM area all the way to liberal arts. Um, especially with our students, it's not uncommon for them to either pick a major or a minor that is correlated. For example, you could major in economics and minor in finance, or we've had students in the past that major in nursing and minor in dance, just because that's something that interests them. So for all of our students, regardless of what they want to major and minor in, you do have flexibility to really pick the courses that are the best interest to you. So with housing on campus, 79% of our freshmen do reside on campus, and we do guarantee uh, two big things at the university. One is that we guarantee housing for all four years, including our first year students, as well as our first year students are allowed to have a car on campus, um, their first year, second year, so on and so forth. So whether you guys are thinking about living on campus, not having a car or living on campus and having your vehicle, you have the best options of both worlds. So this slide talks a little bit more about our application process. So we are on the common application, but aside from that, if you would like to submit the direct application on our website, you can do so at widener.edu slash apply. We have two types of decision at the university. One is early action, which means that your application is in and complete by November 1st. Any admission decision that you receive is non-binding, and we guarantee an admission decision to you by at least the Thanksgiving holiday. If you don't meet the deadline, uh, if you're a senior, which is a Monday by the early action, no problems. You simply fall into regular decision, in which case students hear back from us on a rolling admission basis, and they typically hear back within three to four weeks of their application becoming complete. So for this fall uh, of 2022 entry, we are test optional. So aside from the application, whether that would be the common application or the Widener application, you are required to submit your high school transcript and the essay, or you can submit your high school transcript and your SAT or ACT test scores. I do wanna mention that if you decide not to submit any standardized test scores, that will not negatively affect your application whatsoever. Aside from the required materials, um, any letters of recommendation are optional. Um, and if you are taking any AP, IB, or dual enrollment credits, we do look for those class courses to come over for credit to Widener as well. So with support services on campus being a smaller institution, we start with your admission counselor. Um, so for wherever you guys go to high school, we assigned a counselor uh, based off that territory. And that person is assigned to you to help you through the application process, 
If you have any questions about visiting, shadowing student, really anything um, from your sophomore year of high school all the way up to your senior year uh, when you choose to decide which college you uh, tend to enroll in. And for those students that choose Widener, all of the academic support services, um, as well as those that are non-academic, uh, some of them are listed here, but this is by no means a comprehensive list. They are already included in the price of tuition and are there for you, whether uh, you think you need it or not, from day one all the way up into graduation. So for example, you might be a great academic writer, and in your English 101 class, you might ne not necessarily need to visit the writing center, but you might get to your senior year and start working on your senior thesis and realize, hey, I may need a, another set of eyes to look this over for grammar, punctuation, anything in between. So I use that as an example, um, like I alluded to earlier, whether you think you need it or not, you might hit a roadblock uh, throughout your college course, and we have the support services to help you through those. So some of our outcomes, the class of 2020, 91% uh, of them were employed or within graduate school within six months of graduation. And for those students who were working, the mean salary for them was $62,500 per year. So here are some quotes uh, from two students, uh, the class of 2025, about what they had to say about Widener's feel about campus. And if you would like to follow us on social media for any of the platforms that you see down below, you can use the handle at Choose Widener. That brings me to my last slide here. Um, so for any general questions, you can use our main uh, email address, but I'll also provide my contact information in the chat. I do want to mention two things that we are open for uh, in-person in on-campus visits. So we do have daily tours that run uh, on our campus two to three times a day, Monday through Friday. But aside from that, we do have our larger events. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is our Widener Day open house, which is on Saturday, November 13th. Um, so with that, that comes to my conclusion of the presentation about Widener University. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen. And uh, like I mentioned, I'll put my information in the chat. Great. Um, we really appreciate it. So much uh, great information. Um, we do have a little bit of time left, and we'll see if we can squeeze in one uh, question from our Q&A here. Um, so at this time, we're going to pivot into our Q&A portion of the session. I invite all of representatives at this time to go ahead and turn on their cameras to get ready to unmute themselves here for our first question, which is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll go ahead and get started in the same order in which you all presented in. Awesome. What advice would I give someone? Um, I think my advice, this is going to sound very cliche, but I think it's really to just follow your gut uh, when searching for colleges. Um, I feel like a lot of information is going to be sent to all of you um, over the next year or two, depending on how old you are. Um, and a lot of people are going to tell you um, what you should do or what you think you should do. But my best piece of advice is if you feel at home when you're visiting a campus, that might be the right fit for you. And if you are as authentic as possible with yourself during the college search, you are more likely to find a school that um, is more so of a home. So take that cliche advice as you will. Um, maybe my colleagues will have some different and better advice. So my advice is a little bit um, similar. I would say during the college search, I would definitely say try your best if you can, you know, we all have different interests that are maybe far away from home, but try your best to actually physically visit the schools that you want to attend, you may have it in your heart, like, this is the school for me, you know, this is where I want to go. And then when you actually get to campus, you're like, this is not what I thought it was going to be. So I always tell students during your college search, like, you make sure you do your research, you know, make sure this school, you know, that school has everything that, you know, that aligns with your interest and what, you know, what you like, but make sure you actually go there so you can actually get a feel of the campus. And that will actually be the, that will be your deciding factor. Like, you know, is this the right fit for me? So that would be my advice. My advice is to be kind. Um, applying to college is incredibly stressful and it is so much more stressful when you're doing it in the middle of a pandemic. Oh my God. So be kind to yourself, to your counselors, to your classmates, to your parents, just be nice to everybody. And it's all going to work out. I promise, especially if you don't make your parents or your counselors angry along the way. So be kind. 
Hey, yeah, I agree with my colleagues. I mean, you know, be nice, visit, um, you know, follow your heart, follow your gut. You know, it's it's a long um, experience, but it'll be worthwhile. Um, you know, with the pandemic, there's so many opportunities outside of being able to physically um, you know, visit a school that may be in a different state. So a lot of a lot of us have virtual visits. So I highly encourage participate in that. And one thing I learned recently is, as, as my fellow colleagues said, be kind to your school counselors, your guidance counselors. You want them to write nice things about you. If you have not met them yet, make sure you knock on their door and introduce yourself so they know who you are. They have a lot of students they're working with. So I highly encourage that you um, partake in uh, making yourself more visible uh, to your uh, teachers and counselors. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with, with all the advice has been, that's been uh, spoken so far. Um, another piece of advice I probably would give you is, you know, if you are interested in a school, don't be afraid to, to get on a school's mailing list or, you know, if you're at a college fair, fill out a card or scan a QR code to get on a college's mailing list. Um, if you feel like, you know, maybe you don't want your personal email address to be full of college mail, it might be a good idea to make a separate, you know, email account while you're going through the college search process, just so you can kind of filter, you know, the emails that you would get from the colleges you're looking at into a different email account. So just something to think about there. So my advice for students that are going through this process would be don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, and that goes for anyone that you want to ask questions uh, to. So you might email your admissions counselor at a particular university. Don't be afraid to ask a question. Stepping on campus to visit in person for a tour. Don't be afraid to ask questions for the student ambassadors, the faculty. This is going to be your home away from home for four years. So no questions is a stupid one. You want to make sure that you get all your questions answered to make sure that it's the right fit for you. And what a great way to end. Um, as a common theme that was mentioned from all our representatives, that it's truly your process. And so um, we, all, we are all here for you during this college um, application process. Um, it can be a lot, but um, there are people in your corner. So again, thank you to our representatives for all the great information for being here. We definitely appreciate your time. And thank you to all our attendees for being here. As we close, there'll be a very quick five question survey that will appear on your browser. If you don't mind taking a moment to fill that out for us, your feedback is extremely helpful. This is one of many college presentations being offered, so feel free to check the schedule on the website for more. And lastly, this session is being recorded and will be available later on demand at strivescan.com slash New Jersey. We have now reached the conclusion of this session. Again, thank you all and have a great night.